Okay, this is a follow-up video on uh, doing the 1978 to 77 on down conversion front for the uh, 78 G10 cargo van shorty. I just wanted to show you guys uh, what I'm doing about the um, fitting of the grill and uh, the marker lights. I picked up a set of marker lights. The marker lights for the 77 on down Chevrolet G vans are extremely hard to come across. So what I did was I picked up a set of, uh, I believe they came off of a 1970, 69, 70 Chevrolet C10 pickup. It's exact measurements. You do have to remove these uh, outer protruding pieces of steel. But once you do that, the next step will be to drill a hole to fit the uh, light bulb socket through the uh, firewall. And then you'll have to use some self-tapping screws, one here and one here on each side. Take the lens off and drill it directly to the firewall. So also this is kind of a box opening video also because I got my chrome back from the chrome shop. This is the mock-up grill that I've been using. And if you're going to have a grill similar to this condition, chromed, uh, make sure you check out my other video on uh, grills. Okay, um, I didn't intentionally set out to buy a mock-up grill, but that's what I used this one for. But you, if you're going to not use a mock-up grill, make sure you do the mock-up prior to sending your grill out to the chrome shop because it is not cheap. I paid over $600 to have my grill chromed and another 600 and some odd dollars to have my front bumper chromed. Yeah, chrome is not cheap, guys. Okay, anyway, um, some of the things you're going to need to cut and do, I'll show you right now. This the way it protrudes out on the 78 and up new body style grill the old body style grill will not work unless you make this modification you have to do some sheet metal cutting and I'll take this grill off right now and I'll show you what I'm talking about and you'll have to do the same thing on both sides also you're going to want to make sure at least if you can It'll save you a little bit of work. You're going to have to cut on both sides. But see right here the way this grill goes right up against this uh, body molded line. You want to push the grill all the way up against it. And on that side, you're going to have to do some cutting and moving some sheet metal to make it fit properly. You see I've got a marked line on the fender right there. That black sharpie line. See, because the grill, there's a notch right here. Right here. The grill hits up against the body. And it leaves this really nice gap. That's sarcasm. The gap sucks. So, in order to fix this, you're going to have to cut and remove all the white portion from here to the black line and then reattach this and then weld it right along here and then primer it and repaint it. Beauty is pain and I guess it's the same thing for cars. It's a really real pain. Okay, so Getting back to it, let me pull this grill off and I will show you what section you have to remove to make the grill fit. Okay, I've made the hole. And as you can see, I've made my cut. And this is now a 77 on down Chevrolet G van front marker turn signal light. 
So now uh, this actually is tight. So I'll have to put this on prior to putting the grill on. But uh, there's plenty of room for the marker light. As you can see, it goes, it goes right in. It's actually a perfect fit. I'm not going to be using the clear. I did buy amber light lenses to go with this. So anyway, guys, listen, uh, do me a big solid here and uh, give me a thumbs up. And also, if you like this type of, uh, of, the, of project, do me a favor, another favor, and give me a like and a subscribe. And also put a comment in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate that. Let me know what you guys think of this project so far. Uh, if you want to check out my other videos, my other videos will show you the um, progress where this van has come a long way, including uh, going from regular steel wheels, rally wheels, to Krager SS chrome wheels, to now torque thrust two wheels. My next project will be new front brake calipers, and I will be painting those white or red. I am definitely leaning towards white. If you guys think I should go red, put that also in the comment. Let me know. I just bought some uh, um, cross-drilled and slotted brake rotors for it to make it pop. And I'm going to uh, do a disc brake conversion on the uh, rear axle as well. And I stuck a 20-inch torque thrust twos on the rear and 18s up front. I did some um, retro, old school style uh, mud flaps, Yosemite Sam. Okay, now, without any further ado, I'm going to do the unwrapping for you guys on the front bumper and front grille all chromed up. Man, all in all, I'm at $3,000 on this conversion. It's unbelievable how expensive things have gotten under uh, Brandon. But anyway, let me do the opening. All right, first we'll start by checking out the back side. And as you can see before, taking this down to the chrome shop, I went the extra mile and I welded the front brackets on. And I filled in the carriage bolt holes on both sides. So this is now Pretty much a one of a kind. I mean, I imagine there's a few people that have done this. I can't be the only one to have done this, but um, I did do it, and I haven't seen another van with them filled in.
See, there was a hole here, here, and here. Those are now gone. So I paid 220, no, $240 for this bumper on eBay. It was an actually, uh, it was actually a painted bumper. It was never chromed. I recommend if you're going to do this to buy a chrome bumper as opposed to the painted one because painted bumpers can actually have Bondo on them and uh, you won't know that until you take the paint off. This bumper was actually in really good shape. It didn't have any Bondo on it. It did have some weird pit marks from uh, water running down right here where the, uh, the hood meets the fender dripping down onto the bumper. It caused a little trail of um, pinprick uh, rust spots. But um, these guys could have done a little bit better job on the chroming because it's still a little distorted here. I actually gave them an extra 160 bucks to put some lead here, which to me doesn't look like they did. I mean, they may have put a little bit. I'm not going to say that they didn't. But um, I actually got it pretty smooth before taking it to them. But all in all, uh, 240 for the bumper, plus another 600 and some odd dollars for the uh, chrome plating. About 850 bucks for that bumper. So it was not cheap. Not cheap at all. Okay, now for the pizza of the resistance. The grill. I also did the headlight bezel. Now this is also show chrome, so I didn't go with the cheaper. I could have gone, uh, gotten this for several hundred dollars cheaper, but um, this one was $900 to chrome. And the grill itself cost me, uh, what did I pay? I paid, um, $480 shipped, bought it on eBay. Basically, I'm in at about 1500 bucks for the grill. This is my second grill, though, like I said. I also bought that grill. I also bought another bumper. I bought... I bought this bumper here. Did the same thing with it. But the chrome shop that did the grill and the other bumper said that they couldn't straighten it out. It had a little bit more warpage when I filled in the... Uh, well, actually, it was already damaged before because this bumper was off a wrecked fan. Uh, I straightened it out and I took it to this other chrome shop. They told me that they could fix it. And I asked them, well, shouldn't you fix it before I weld the brackets on? They said, oh, no, no, we can fix it after. That uh, company actually really sucked. So this bumper, I paid uh, 250 for it, and I paid another $200 for this shitty-ass nickel job. This is not even chrome. All I did was nickel plate it. Oh, yeah. I bought another Copart car. Yeah, some stinking cat has already been crawling over the engine. 
You see that? It's an 07 Honda Accord. I actually put a bid on this car over a year ago. And then last month it hailed. They didn't update the photographs. So you should always go look at a car, guys. You're going to buy from Copart. I don't know if that's coming up good on the uh, video or not, but the, the roof is just pelted. So I'm going to have to paint the roof. The sides actually came out okay, especially the driver's side. Passenger side came out a little bit more wavy. A little bit more hail impact you can see here. I'm probably just going to... I don't know if I'm going to paint the quarter panel. i got to paint the bumper cover because... Well, I'm going to replace the bumper cover and paint it because it's got some damage here and here. The bumper covers are cheap. Uh, from All Makes, the rear bumper, I believe, is uh, like $78. Front bumper is like $87. So I'll be putting probably new fenders on it. Replace them both. i got to replace this one for sure. And the top of this one got hail damage, so I'm going to replace it. Uh, you look at even the mirror. The mirror got taken out from the hail on both sides. But this car's only got 117,000 miles on it. 117,276 miles to be exact. Both airbags did deploy. Steering wheel and dash. But other than that, the interior is not bad. Doesn't smell. These are really good cars, guys. If you need a cheap car, I suggest getting yourself one of these. Um, this is the original paint. Love the color. This one's got the four-way disc brakes even. Um, the tires are not that great. But they'll do in a pinch. Oh, and she runs really good, too. I suppose I should show you that. See, busted mirror from uh, hail. Uh, I didn't even go look at this one. But, yeah, so so do, do as I say, not as I do. The battery is, is dead. Oh, there it goes. But it, the battery is really, really weak. Now, like I said, the car was sitting for over a year. I charged it for a little bit, but um, still gonna need some charging. But she goes right into gear, drives really good. The only thing, other thing that sucks is the uh, AC condenser took uh, some damage, not from this wreck, but right here. So when that happened, it lost all of its free freon. So I'm going to have to replace the AC condenser, then evacuate the system, then have it charged. Also, another thing, I let it run and run and run, and uh, the cooling fans never came on, even when I turned the air conditioning on. So, it's probably a relay, a fuse, or it could be the electric fans. One other thing, you know, uh, I made the mistake of buying this car through um, Auto Bidmaster. My membership had expired, so they wanted $300, $350 for their premier membership. I didn't want to spend that kind of money, so instead I opted. Well, I, I called them up and said, hey, look, man, I, I had the membership. I paid for it um, in 2020, and I never even used it once. So I asked them if they can give me a discount uh, so I can renew my membership and buy this. Not, not this car. There was another car I, was, I wanted to buy which was a 2016 Toyota 4Runner, and I expected to pay around $8,000 for that one. But uh, it actually went for, I think, 10 dollars 
and it still didn't meet the reserve, but I, I, I don't know if they sold it or not, if they accepted the 10.5. But um, in any case, do not buy from Auto Bidmaster. Do not do not use them unless you absolutely have to. Uh, like if it's a clean title car, uh, Auto Bidmaster is now a waste of money because they used to allow you to buy from you know, the cheap column, pay the cheap column price over at uh, Copart, and anytime you spent more than $3,000 on a car, you actually saved money. Once you got to 3000 you saved like $51 over buying directly from Copart alone. That is no longer the case. Copart changed the way they, they allow them to um, do it. So I paid $240 to make it short. They get, did give me a discount on the membership, $240. Then I had to pay them an extra $200 for their, for their fee. So I paid $444 more for that Honda Civic than I would have had I bought them directly from Copart. Had I bought them directly from Copart, I, my successful winning bid on that car was, well, I won it at 1350 I was the high bidder, and then uh, they countered me at $2,000. That's another thing, guys. Seriously, consider not upping your bid if you are the high bidder. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'm going to do that again unless I really, really want the car. But um, they countered me at 2000 so I went up 50 bucks to 1400 Then they countered me down to uh, 1600 So I thought, well, I'll meet them. At, I'll, I'll go up. Uh, I went up to, um, what did I do? I went up to 1450 And then they still didn't go down. And then I decided, well, I'm going to do it one more time. So I put another 50. So I got, I was a successful bidder at $1,500. And with Copart fees and Auto Bidmaster fees, I wound up paying $2,394 for that 2007 Honda Accord. Now, those cars are actually going with the clean title right now for around $7,500. I figure it's going to cost me around $500 to make it look like brand new and, you know, including getting the AC uh, working. So um, I'll be able to sell it for probably around $6,000. And it's going to cost me, like I said, uh, about another 500 bucks. So I'll, I will be in it right around $3,000 or right at $3,000. So I'll still be able to double my money on it. And the good thing about Hondas is basically they are money in the bank. But I could have had a lot more money in the bank had I not used Auto Bidmaster because that car was a salvage title car. Uh, I am not a dealer, so I can't buy from um, Copart a clean title car unless I have Auto Bidmaster do it for me. Auto Bidmaster is a auto broker. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but you can look them up. But um, there is no benefit to using them anymore since eBay, fee eBay fees have changed. The rules have changed. It's not worth it. Don't use them. Uh, like I said, I paid uh, uh, $444 more than I would have. In fact, in fact, the out-the-door price from Copart directly, I would have paid 1900 and some odd dollars for it, like 1980 or something like that. So, yeah, that sucks. I hate throwing away money. But um, anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. And if you want to see the repair on, on the uh, Honda Accord, or if you want to see um, the conclusion to my Brandon series, subscribe. Do me a favor, thumbs up. Appreciate it. And um, have a great day. Oh, and let's go, Brandon. <laughs>